I hope everyone is keeping well. Kenya is still dropping new stories. Anyone is free to speak their mind to the full regarding the sequence of events going on in Kenya. James Orengo, a Kenyan lawyer and a well-known human rights activist and politician, and who also happens to be the current governor for Siaya County in Kenya, is speaking his mind. This guy is straight up asking Ruto to resign. What is saying sums up who really Ruto is as a leader and what he is made of. The very fact that he was able to deploy the army on the streets of Nairobi is shocking, but not surprising to those who know Ruto. If all the money they have taken from taxes for corrupt deals was returned to the government, all debt would be paid now. It has also been alleged that the members of parliament who voted yes were each paid 200,000 shillings in cash. If this is true, now that is what I call corruption in its finest. Please take a listen. Mr. Orengo is soft-spoken. I call upon President Ruto to resign. If it's true to what he says and what he said about what used to happen in previous administration, including President Uhuru's government where he was deputy president, if it's true to what he said at that time, the logical thing to do for, for him in a democracy is to resign because he is going to lead people to stand up for their rights. And for President Ruto, anybody who stands up for his right is a criminal. First of all, I have uh, attended post-mortems, and I'm used to seeing dead people. Uh, in my legal practice, I've seen quite a number of dead bodies before being killed, because in my criminal practice, uh, to wait as witness a post-mortem, it is already, it's all, always in cases where there's been an unnatural death. What I've seen just now, Shocking. It's completely shocking. See one of our young men who whatever the missile, whatever the caliber of the um, handgun or the instrument that was used to cause that injury that led to his death. Is something that even in a war, in a war front, somebody would not be used to apply those kind of rules. We see people die in war fronts, bodies from war fronts. What I've seen now shows the amount of violence that was meted against uh, these patterns. And uh, I'm hearing yesterday talking about criminals. It was such a callous speech. His statement yesterday was completely irresponsible. Because under the Constitution, the President takes a vote to protect every life, every life, irrespective of the status of the individual. I didn't hear any other of passion or sympathy for those who have died. And according to the figures we're getting, they may be beyond 35 fatalities all over the world. And those people have suffered gunshot wounds, could be anywhere close to 150. There are people we have seen here, people we know. Even rubber bullets are used in order to restrain but not to cause an injury that can affect the spine or any delicate parts of the human body. So quite apart from what happened yesterday, what I've seen today is an exemplification of the brutality of the government we're dealing with. We are used to, even in a situation where somebody is declared a, a criminal, 
it's still the duty of the state to protect the life of that person, not to take their life away. Now, more importantly, Kenyans have lived with demonstrations for a long time. In the year 1926, Ari Tuku led a demonstration somewhere between uh, North Hotel, the University, and Central Police Station. And police ap applied violence, colonial police. But if you compare the violence of the colonial police in 1926 to the violence of the federal government, it is beyond comprehension. Beyond com comprehension. Even the massacre in South Africa, in which many children died in 67, I don't think there is such violence that has been meted by uh, President Putin. I mean, my call when you have to kill to survive in power, because this is what is happening, because he has now deployed the military. And the military, you know, they, they are not entertainers. They are deployed to deal with a violent situation. But we don't have a violent situation. We have a situation where a president is struggling for survival. In these kind of circumstances, where you are forced to kill people in order to retain power. And where we witness nearly the whole country up saying enough is enough. If you are truly a democracy under the current constitution, President Ruto should just resign. He should just resign. But I don't think that the Kenyans are going to change their mind. I think they have given a statement of no confidence. Yeah, the government. Yeah. We went beyond the issue of the finance bill because when he should have acted, he didn't, and now he has done, he's done a referral to Parliament. Uh, what that means is that uh, if the same uh, MPs who pass the finance bill are the ones who are going to deal with that finance bill, the result will still be the same. By uh, understanding. So, me, I call upon him to resign. I call upon President Putin to resign. If it's true 